I'm just trying to check the number of women in the room. <laughs> you would know that government and the ruling party has set itself a target of 50% representation across all spheres and forums, and in particular at levels of decision making. And I'm sure Lorena won't be wrong by saying that uh, we still have a long way to go when it comes to forums like this. We don't say any man should lose his job, but we believe that we need to create space for women. And I'm sure that if we, if we do that, we'll, we'll realize the benefits. All of us here are actually beneficiaries of a decision of the first woman on earth, who showed that women are not selfish. <laughs> Program Director and the Chief Executive Officer of the National Businesses Initiative, Mr. Andre Fori, members of the business community that are gathered here this evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. They usually say everything happens for a reason. 2010 is the year that we as South Africans have been waiting for, and I believe it is the year that God created for South Africa. And we all know that central to the success of the FIFA 2010 World Cup is issues of access to energy, both liquid fuels as well as power or electricity. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate the sacrifices that you have made to be away from your busy schedules in order to have a discourse with us as the Department of Energy on the future of energy security in our country, South Africa. This is important, particularly given the role that energy efficiency and demand side management can and must play in ensuring that we have certainty of security of supply. With all associated benefits such as enhancing the socio-economic well-being of our country. When we worked in here, I realized that every table has got some form of energy source or the other. And I believe that those who own the night is those who are sitting at the table for energy efficiency. Because we believe that is one way that all of us could contribute to making it possible that we can have energy security. It is heartening to see some CEOs and managing directors present here tonight. And it is, often, it is often the case that when tragic events happen, when we close ranks and respond with the necessary fortitude, I would remember when Valerie and Mr. Fori, you would remember last year when I had the opportunity to be given a presentation on the performance of the NBI in relation to energy efficiency. We're told that in the beginning, there was excitement and eagerness to participate, but later on, people relaxed. And I'm sure this evening we realized, like you said, that since people have been seeing this bar from, from ESCOM on the TV every night, they believe it will be there, even if they say today the signs show that we are in the red, let us try and make sure that we respond appropriately. They say, okay, yesterday it was just like that, it will be like that tomorrow, because the lights have not gone off. And it is only during crisis situations that people really feel that they need to do something. I had an opportunity to buy shoes in Santen here in 2008 through the light of a cell phone. Because the lady who was the sales lady said to me, ma'am, I'm sure of a commission on this pair of shoes. If you, if you don't buy, I won't get my commission. Even if I have to write in the old way on the receipt books, not using the tin, but at least you would have bought. So I had to do that. And there are quite a number of instances where we have experienced the lights not being able to switch on when you switch on. Or alternatively, when you walk into a shower, singing in the morning, and then throughout, it's cold water. And I'm sure even those who say they are Christians know of instances where they were swearing, <laughs> like they say in Africans, like the Shosti Matros. <laughs> but I think that tonight we are here as the Department of Energy, to engage with you 
to be able to say, together, what can we do to realize more benefits? The example that has been made with the presentation by Woolworths, in actual fact, as you presented, and also in Valerie's presentation, when you showed the Woolworths uh, uh, warehouse, this is the Woolworths warehouse, it reminded me that we had to go to the UK for the president to be taken to an energy efficient uh, uh, supermarket. And I'm sure that there are so many supermarkets here in the country. Every time we have to experience that, I just say, at home, we can showcase many of such examples, but we just didn't give ourselves time to showcase it to our own president for him to go and see it in other parts of the world. But I believe that what we have seen tonight here, if we can collect that information, put it together and be able to show the world that we mean business when we talk energy efficiency. When we say buildings are energy efficient, you have shown what West Bank can be able to do. And I'll say at least my money doesn't go, you know, <laughs> to me. But I think it is important that we have more of those, even if it is not at a forum like this, but let us also as a department get that type of information. And OMPI, we believe that we need to do a database of all these so that we can be able to know. Let us not normally know that there's Central Energy Fund there, there's a Japanese embassy there, there's the one of the hotels, but we should be able to say, this is the number of these type of industries that are actually energy efficient. And, and at times, being able to stand on a platform and showcase or speak positively about those would actually encourage those who have not retrofitted on or, or moved over to be able to move over. So I think it is important that we do that. So we are saying that we also had an indication that uh, CEOs and managing directors of many of even our member companies here sometimes don't take these initiatives very seriously. They delegate it to the last person in the company who is not necessarily too busy. And I believe that if we want to show leadership, if we want to make it possible that we are taken seriously, it is important that this energy efficiency drive be driven from the highest office. You have seen last week on the 28th, when the president was launching one of our key intervention programs in energy efficiency, which is the solar water heating systems, we actually said that our captain of our industry, which is the, the government, the political industry, should be seen to be leading from the front. And that is why that program was launched by the president. Because he is the first champion for energy efficiency in the country. And whatever he says, many people listen. And whatever he, he, he does, we need to be, to be able to do. But we need to also realize that energy efficiency is one direct intervention that gives hope to those of our people who don't have access as we speak. Because if you save, you then say to those that I'm saving because I'm concerned about you. And I remember last week the president was making an example that when there was load shedding in the country, the people in the rural areas and others in the squatter camps were saying, huh, but why should be people jumping up and down? What's so wrong? What's so, what's, what has happened? Because we are used to not having lights. So suddenly because certain people don't have lights, then the whole country must kick up and down. But I think that response came about as a result of the fact that we, we, we do